So, um, good morning. Uh, topic assigned to me is uh, radiological investigations of uh, backache. So why is backache important? Low back pain is a very common symptom, which can affect about 80% of the population at least once in lifetime. Each year, 15 to 20% of the population will have back pain. And it is the second most common reason for symptom-related physician visits. Low back pain is the most common site of chronic pain. Uh, it is the most common cause of work-related disability. So why do we need to take it seriously? Acute low back pain is often recurrent. It predisposes to chronic pain and disability. It may be a warning of potential future trouble or sinister underlying pathology. It can have a significant impact on quality of life. It may lead to lost days of productivity. However, uncomplicated, non-specific acute low back pain is usually a benign and a self-limiting condition that does not warrant any imaging studies. There is a high rate of uh, spontaneous remission, most without a specific diagnosis. Uh, and only 7% become, uh, will become chronic. On the other hand, degenerative changes are frequently detected in the aging spine. MRI shows disc pathology in majority of adults and many asymptomatic people. So imaging is likely to result in an abnormal report. All positive findings may not be attributed to the acute presentation. So we need to determine whether it is actually abnormal or just, uh, is it just normal aging. Therefore, it is imperative that uh, the imaging findings be correlated with the clinical findings. The differential diagnosis of uh, acute low back pain, it could be intrinsic to the spine, it could be systemic, or it could be referred. I'll be mostly concentrating in this group. Common causes of low back pain, it's uh, mostly mechanical. So the challenge for the clinician is to distinguish that small segment within this large patient population whom should be evaluated further to look for emergency and catastrophic causes. Clinicians should be aware of the indicators of a more complicated status, often termed red flags. The yellow f uh, and the yellow flags, which are patient characteristics that can indicate long-term problems requiring greater attention. So the red flags indicate possi uh, possible serious pathology and it indicates the need for further investigations. There are red flags indicating possible fracture, possible tumor or infection and possible significant neurological deficit. I'm not going to go through the whole list and if this uh, list is too extensive, there's an easier mnemonic that is uh, tuna fish. So yellow flags are patient characteristics that can indicate long-term problems requiring greater attention by the physician, particularly in terms of returning to work. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole list to save some time. So once we have decided to uh, evaluate uh, backache radiologically, there are various modalities available to us. Uh, most frequently we use X-ray, CT, and MRI. Less frequently, we use uh, nuclear medical uh, imaging, uh, that is uh, isotope bone, scan, bone scanning, PET scanning, and uh, maybe DEXA scan. And myelography and discography is only occasionally used. So when it comes to plain radiography, the advantages are it's, it's a widely and readily available investigation. It is fast, and it's a low-cost investigation, uh, and it gives good bony details. <clears throat> so therefore, it is very useful in trauma. So the, the disadvantages are exposure to radiation. It gives only a 2D image. 
and gives very uh, poor soft tissue details. So therefore, it has limited use in infection or inflammation. Uh, vertebral alignment can be easily assessed on a plane radiograph. For example, this X-ray shows anterolisthesis of L4 over L5 vertebra. Uh, advantages of CT are relative, it, it is a relatively available uh, investigation. It gives excellent bony details. Uh, the images are available in multiple planes with uh, 3D reconstructions. Therefore, it is useful in trauma and when MRI is contraindicated or not available. For example, this CT show, elegantly shows a burst fracture of uh, L1 vertebral body. So the disadvantages of CT are exposure to radiation, high cost, relatively poor soft tissue details compared to MRI. Therefore, its use is limited in disc pathology or nerve root compression. So the advantages of MRI are there's no exposure to radiation. It gives excellent soft tissue details and multiplanar images uh, can be acquired. So therefore, it's very useful in disc disease, infection, inflammation, and metastatic disease. Uh, the disadvantages are it's not a widely or readily available study. Uh, it's time consuming, high cost, and uh, false positives. That is, it's too sensitive. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, most adults will have some changes. So it is not used as a primary investigation in trauma. A uh, few examples of uh, MRIs being used to good defect. Uh, this MRI shows acute osteomyelitis with discitis. And this MRI shows vertebral uh, uh, spinal TB. And this uh, MRI shows uh, multiple vertebral meds. Uh, the nuclear imaging, that is isotope bone scan and PET scan, the main advantage is that the whole body can be evaluated at once. Therefore, it is very useful in uh, evaluating metastasis or occult infection. The disadvan there are many disadvantages. Uh, for example, uh, exposure to radiation, limited availability and high cost. Uh, it gives poor anatomical details. There are false positives. Uh, for example, uh, in elderly due to the presence of uh, OA. And there are false negatives, for example, with diffuse bone mets and uh, multiple myeloma. So uh, its use in intervertebral disc or trauma is very limited and uh, certainly not for primary imaging. So this is a bone scan showing multiple vertebral mets and this is a PET scan showing multiple mets. <clears throat> So one other fact, uh, factor that we should consider when choosing a radiological investigation is the radiation dose. Uh, to determine the radiation burden of a certain study, we tend to compare it with the dose of a chest X-ray. For example, lumbar X-ray will be equivalent to 75 chest X-rays. And a lumbar CT will be up to 500 chest X-rays, so it's quite a high dose. And a bone scan will be around 300 chest X-rays. And a PET scan will be much higher. So how do we decide uh, on the most suitable diagnostic test? It may be a little tricky as there are various factors to consider. Fortunately, there are accepted guidelines, as Professor Badra uh, mentioned. Um, for example, diagnostic imaging pathways developed by the government of Western Australia, available in this website, and ACR appropriate, ACR is American College of Radiology Appropriateness Criteria, available in this website. A word or two about this uh, diagnostic imaging pathways. It's a very useful site uh, where it gives uh, imaging pathways for many clinical scenarios, and it's available for free. So this uh, you may not, uh, I'll, uh, I have, yeah. 
This is from diagnostic imaging pathways. The clinical scenario is acute low back pain. So if, if there's back pain only, that is without neurological symptoms, uh, you consider red flags. So if there are red, red flags, you go for a plain radiograph. If there are no red flags, conservative treatment, and if the patient has not improved, uh, you have to go for a plain radiograph. So uh, with the plain radiograph, the cause for pain is found, then treat or further investigate as necessary. And you may proceed for an MRI. If the cause for pain is still uncertain, you go for an MRI. And if the MRI is contraindicated or not available, you can go for a CT study. Uh, if, if you are suspecting bone emits or multifocal infection, you can go for a bone scan. Uh, similarly, if there are neurological symptoms or signs, we can go through this path. So this is uh, the a ACR appropriateness criteria for clinical condition, low back pain. So uh, there is an appropriateness criteria scale from one to nine, one being least appropriate and nine uh, being the most appropriate. For example, MRI uh, ha will have a low score of two for uncomplicated low back pain without red flags. On the other hand, MRI will have a high score of nine for Kodaikwana syndrome. And uh, as expected, CT and X-rays will have a high score for trauma. And if you are suspecting cancer, infection, or immunosuppression, a bone scan will have a higher score. Disc uh, nomen uh, nomenclature. Yes, you the clinicians and we the radiologists, uh, it is very important that we uh, communicate in the same language because disc nomenclature has changed over the years. All concerned need use of standard terms and current definitions for normal and pathologic conditions of lumbar discs. There are various, uh, not too dissimilar terms like disc bulge, disc herniation, disc protrusion, disc extrusion, disc migration, and disc sequestration. All of these will have a different meaning, different and a specific meaning. Uh, lumbar disc nomenclature version 2.0 uh, published in the Spine Journal of uh, November 1st, 2014, gives a good account of disc nomenclature. And I have uh, used this as a guide for the next few slides. This is a normal disc uh, in a CT study and in a MRI study. So a disc bulge is annular tissue projecting beyond the margins of the adjacent vertebral bodies over more than 90 degrees, that is more than 25% of the disc circumference. A circumferential disc bulge will involve the entire disc circumference. And a asymmetric disc bulge does not involve the entire circumference, but uh, more than 90 degrees. This is an MRI study showing a disc bulge in the right side and a normal disc in the left side for comparison. A disc protrusion involves less than 25% 25, uh, 25 of the disc circumference, that is less than 90 degrees, uh, uh, that is less than 90 degrees. And it will have a broader base and a uh, narrower dome. So that's an example of a disc protrusion. Uh, disc extrusion, on the other hand, will have a wider dome and a narrower base. That's an example of a disc extrusion. Disc migration is displacement of disc material away from the parent disc. Uh, on disc sequestration, uh, the migrated disc will uh, lose its direct continuation with the parent disc. So it's kind of a free, frag free disc fragment as seen on this MRI study. Uh, an annular fissure is separation between annular fibers. The term annular tear 
is best avoided. So intervertebral disc herniation or Schmolz node is disc material displaced beyond the disc space through the vertebral end plate into the vertebral body. So this CT and this MRI shows intervertebral disc herniation. So this is a summary of uh, disc diseases that I have already discussed. So disc localization in horizontal or axial plate, for example, uh, a disc protrusion may be into the central zone or may be into the subarticular or paracentral zone, it may be into the foraminal zone, uh, it may be into the extraforaminal or far lateral zone or into the anterior zone. So this is the same thing in a more colorful and uh, attractive diagram. The localization in sagittal and coronal planes, for example, a sequestrated disc may be at the disc level, uh, at the suprapedicular level, a pedicular level, or in the infrapedicular level. Uh, this is the same thing in a coronal plane. The grading uh, severity of canal compromise or canal stenosis uh, if the canal compromise is less than one third of the canal at that section is mild. If it is between one and two thirds, it's moderate. And if it is greater than two thirds, it's severe. The same grading can be applied for foraminal involvement. So what are modic changes? The modic cl classification describes degenerative and inflammatory changes involving the vertebral end plates and the adjacent vertebral bodies as seen on MRI. So modic type one is uh, when the vertebral end plate and the adjacent vertebral body is low signal on T1 weighted study and high signal on T2 weighted study. So it indicates inflammation or edema. Uh, on uh, modic type 2 is when uh, uh, the when it is high signal on T1 weighted and high signal on T2 weighted study and it represents fatty replacement of bone marrow modic type 3 it is low signal on T1 weighted and T2 weighted studies it indicates reactive sclerosis so these are actual MR images, this is T1, this is T2, again T1, T2, and this is T1, and this is T2. This is uh, modic type 1, this is modic type 2, and this is modic type 3. So in conclusion, to summarize, backache is a very common symptom. It is important to identify the red flags and the yellow flags of backache. Incidental degenerative findings are very common in the lower spine and it is important to determine whether they are actually abnormal or is it uh, just normal aging. Uh, correlation of the imaging findings and clinical findings is therefore imperative. Various imaging modalities can be used to evaluate backache. Accepted guidelines are available to assist clinicians to select the most suitable diagnostic test. All concerned need usage of standard terms for the normal and pathological conditions of lumbar discs that can be used accurately and consistently and thus best serve patients with backache. Thank you.